My name is Carter Williamson and I'm here in the MELS program at Brandon University. We're here in the Breast Cancer Cell and Molecular Research Lab uh, run by my supervisor, Dr. Mashumi Majumder here at Brandon University. I'm incredibly grateful to be a recipient of the Research Manitoba Master's Studentship Award. On top of alleviating some of the financial burden of being in a master's program, it also has shown me that there are people who believe in what we're doing here and that what the work we're doing uh, is important uh, and will benefit people in the future. That vote of confidence gives me motivation on days when research gets tough uh, and it's an honor that I don't take lightly. Triple negative breast cancer uh, is a particularly aggressive form of breast cancer uh, that makes up about 10 to 15 percent of all cases. Uh, what sets it apart is that it lacks three common receptors, uh, the estrogen, progesterone and HER2 receptors that are often used as targets uh, in other types of breast cancer treatment. This means that hormone therapies and certain targeted drugs uh, that work in other breast cancer subtypes uh, just don't work here. That leaves us with more general systemic treatments like chemotherapy as the main line of defense. But triple negative breast cancer also tends to grow and spread more quickly than other subtypes and has a higher chance of uh, recurring following treatment. That makes it not only more difficult to treat, uh, but also more dangerous for patients. On top of that, chemotherapy doesn't always work forever. Cancer cells can develop uh, resistance, making them less responsive to treatment over time. Uh, and that's what makes triple negative breast cancer so challenging. It's aggressive, it spreads quickly, and we're often left with fewer tools to fight it. Chemotherapy resistance happens when cancer cells survive drug treatment and adapt so that they become even harder to kill in the future. It's a bit like Darwin's idea of the survival of the fittest. Inside a tumor, you have millions of cells, each slightly different. Some are more vulnerable and die off when they're exposed to treatment, but others uh, might have traits that help them survive. Uh, these more resilient cells go on to grow and divide, and that's how resistance builds. What I study is how cancer cells use energy to survive that stress. Metabolism is just the word that we use for all the chemical reactions uh, happening inside of our bodies to create energy and build uh, the materials that cells need. Our healthy cells have a very tightly regulated metabolism. They use what they need when they need it. Uh, but cancer cells are different. They're selfish, chaotic, and constantly growing. They hijack the body's energy systems and rewire them to support rapid growth. What's especially interesting about triple negative breast cancer is that these cells are incredibly flexible. When we try to shut down a, a, a metabolic pathway with stress, they often find uh, a way to switch to another just like taking a detour when a road is closed. Uh, this ability to adapt under stress helps them survive and possibly resist treatment. By understanding how these cells shift their metabolism under stress, we can look for new vulnerabilities or new ways to target them that go beyond conventional chemotherapy. If we can figure out how they adapt, maybe we can block or inhibit those adaptations or determine potential drug targets that could lead to more effective treatments. A lot of my time is spent culturing and growing breast cancer cells in the lab under controlled conditions. These are living human cells that we grow in flasks, uh, giving them nutrients and mimicking conditions in the human body as best we can. Uh, once we've grown enough cells, we can expose them to uh, different drugs like doxorubicin uh, and observe how they respond. There are a wide variety of experiments that we can do from there. Some are molecular. We might use PCR to look at gene expression or Western blotting to measure protein levels. These tests help us understand what's changing inside the cells at a molecular level. Uh, other assays might look at how the cells behave overall, and these are called functional assays. Uh, they might look at how cancer cells, uh, how fast they grow, how they move, how invasive they are, or how they're using energy. Doxorubicin is one of the most widely used chemotherapy drugs, and it works by damaging the DNA of cancer cells. Uh, or any cells that are rapidly dividing. Uh, the problem is that chemotherapy doesn't discriminate between cancerous cells and other healthy rapidly dividing cells in the body, like those in the, the uh, immune system, for example. That's why it comes with harsh side effects, including nausea, fatigue, immune suppression, uh, and also long-term heart damage. What's especially concerning is the heart damage caused by doxorubicin is irreversible and cumulative, meaning that the more you use it, the greater the risk. So the goal isn't just to make chemotherapy more effective, but also to use less of it whenever possible. My research hopes to contribute to that by identifying metabolic targets in cancer cells that we can hit with other drugs. 
if we can find effective drugs that target these met metabolic pathways, uh, we can use them in combination with doxorubicin to make treatment more effective. That means lower doses, fewer side effects, and better patient outcomes. It's not just about extending life, but improving quality of life during and after treatment. If we can reduce the suffering caused by these treatments without sacrificing their effectiveness, that's a meaningful step forward for patients. We are one of the few labs in the world uh, with access to EP4 antagonists. Uh, this small molecular inhibitor can significantly reduce metastasis to multiple organs and has been tested in multiple animal models. What's most interesting about this EP4 antagonist is that it's actually cardioprotective, uh, which means that those side effects associated with doxorubicin can be managed if we use a combination of doxorubicin and EP4 antagonists. At the end of the day, I'm just incredibly grateful to be part of this work. I was given the opportunity by my supervisor, Dr. Mishumi Majumder, to join this lab and take on a project that has a potential to make a real difference and that's something that I don't take for granted. Triple negative breast cancer is still one of the most difficult forms of cancer to treat and progress is being made but slowly. Uh, my hope is that my work can contribute a small but important piece to the puzzle. The insights we gain about cancer cell metabolism can be used to design better treatment combinations, especially ones that reduce the toxicity of drugs like doxorubicin uh, and hopefully extend lives and ease suffering. This kind of research is never about just one person. It's built on years of work from other scientists uh, and hopefully it adds momentum to the broader movement toward personalized, less harmful cancer care. And if in some way down the line, this work gives someone more time with their mother, daughter, sister, friend, uh, that's what this work is all about.